Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a video response to some of the questions that I've received lately on my channel. So a few people have written me and asked if they should learn Ruby on Rails as a junior developer and try to get a Ruby on Rails job, presumably as their first job in software development. So I'd like to give my opinion on an answer to this as somebody who's been doing Ruby on Rails for about 10 years now. So the short answer to these questions is I can't really answer that for you because whatever programming platform that you want to learn and specialize in is up to the individual. If you're new to programming and you want to start a career doing this, there are a few factors to consider when you're choosing which platform you want to specialize in. First of all, what type of problems do you like to solve? So if you're going to be doing Ruby on Rails and focusing on that, most of what you're going to be doing are back-end problems with business logic. So you'll be in the server realm interfacing a database and implementing whatever business rules need to take place for the application to work. You might be interfacing third-party APIs. You might be designing like some sort of algorithm. You might be doing accounting calculations. Those are things that a Ruby on Rails developer typically does. And while you can do front-end work using Ruby on Rails templates and the sprinklings of JavaScript with it, really in most companies, the job between back-end and front-end now is kind of split between your Ruby on Rails specialist back-end developer and a front-end, which is going to be powered by JavaScript using a platform like React or Vue or Angular. And those are standalone platforms that could be developed in their own silos. They communicate with the Ruby on Rails application through an API. So people who want to specialize in front-end work, they typically like more of the aesthetic aspect of building a website and developing user interfaces. And a lot of times they don't have to worry so much about the business logic and all the calculations that are going on behind the scenes to make the data part of the application work. If you're doing front end with JavaScript, you're mainly worried about that presentation layer of the application. So a lot of this first, you need to consider what do you like doing? And then outside of the area of web development, you've got all sorts of a need for other types of programming. For example, Python is very heavy in data science, and there is a big need for business analyst type people who could crunch numbers and they use Python to pretty much automate large scripts that run data calculations and do statistical analysis interpretation of data. That's another field that you could do. There's AI. And a lot of those things that you probably could do with other languages might also be things that interface with a Rails application through some sort of a microservice or an API. I know that if you want to work in the finance world, you're most likely going to be working in Python or Java, just because most of the applications there are written in those languages. Which brings me to another point is what type of environment and what type of applications do you want to be working on in your future job? So if you're going to be doing Ruby on Rails, you're most likely going to be developing an application that people log into and they get work done. A lot of the bigger applications are software as a service applications and many of those types of companies that run those are kind of relatively new startup-y type companies like Etsy or Airbnb. Those are two really big users of Ruby on Rails. Shopify is another big one. So with that decision that you're making on the type of company and the type of application that you want to work on, and importantly, the type of work environment that those companies tend to foster, 
another thing to look at is the personalities of the developers that you're going to be directly working with. What are the teams like? So if you're doing, let's say, uh, Java or maybe Microsoft platform, which would be .NET and C Sharp, you might be working in more of a corporate big company type of environment just because a lot of big companies that are like fortune 500 companies tend to use those systems much more i know government a lot of government programs are written in java so if you want the stability of a government career then maybe java is a better bet than ruby on rails but the environment is going to be different and the types of people who are drawn to those environments are going to be different. If you're interested in open source like Ruby on Rails, there's a better chance that you have of working for a less formal, smaller company that is more like one of those startups that I mentioned. Another thing to consider when analyzing the language itself is what could you stand doing all day? So one of the things that I like about Ruby on Rails is that it's very much designed around programmer happiness. There's a lot that you could do with very little effort. I consider it to be a very productive language. Whereas I couldn't stand working in Java because I think Java has a lot of verbose declarations that you have to make. I just don't think the tooling in Java world is as good as you get in Ruby on Rails. So how much you like the language depends on those little nuance factors as well. A lot of the people that I've worked with who do Ruby on Rails, some of them actually started out as Java developers and then they got into uh, doing Ruby on Rails just because they liked that language better. They enjoyed working with the syntax. I had one coworker who started doing Ruby on Rails because he wrote scripts to help him automate writing the getters and setters that he would be using in Java. So he wrote Ruby code to write Java code. And then he ended up just doing Ruby on Rails full time. Another factor to consider is geographic location. Where do you want to be? And in the area where you're currently at, what sort of local resources are available to help you learn and help you get your first job? So... I'm pretty lucky because in the city that I'm in in the Midwest, Indianapolis, there's actually a pretty strong Ruby on Rails community here. There are a lot of developers and they go to meetup groups and they have drinks together quite frequently. Uh, that's one of the ways I got introduced to Ruby on Rails. Uh, I've also encountered and trying to build another application, uh, ran into one of the Rails developers and had a good talk with them about it and uh, that was one of the things that kind of convinced me to do Ruby on Rails over csharp.net. Chicago is also another big hub for Ruby on Rails if you're in the Midwest and, and I've lived in both cities actually and also California probably most of the Ruby on Rails developers are concentrated in places like New York and California but as for other cities in the Midwest, like I'm not really sure if you're going to have as many people with that same interest and that same type of career if you're in a place like Louisville or Ohio or uh, maybe even down south. I'm not really sure how concentrated the Rails developers are in those areas and whether you'd have an opportunity to meet other people there. And the number of people in the area also plays a factor in companies looking to hire because they want to be able to get the talent. So if you're hiring in a city where there are no Rails developers, it doesn't really make sense to start your application in Ruby on Rails. You're going to pick whatever is the predominant language used by the talent pool in that city. So I think that's one of the reasons that Rails is uh, use there are a lot of Rails opportunities in the area that I'm in is because of the talent pool that is available here. Whereas in another city, it might be a little bit different and that might also affect the number of local opportunities available. So let me tell you a little bit about my story and how I got into Ruby on Rails. So back around 2012, I was actually a database implementation specialist 
and I wanted to get into web development. I had a friend who wanted me to build an application for him, which was uh, a startup idea. The startup idea didn't end up going anywhere, but I helped him build a minimum viable product. And when I was trying to consider which platform that I want to build this product in, I was considering Ruby on Rails at the time because I've met local Rails developers, but I was also considering doing it in C-sharp.net. So I did a close look and comparison at both programming frameworks. And I felt like Ruby on Rails at the time was a bit more cutting edge than ASP.NET. I felt like looking at the timeline of how features and design patterns were becoming popular, it felt like Rails was the innovator and a lot of aspects of C Sharp were actually kind of mimicking what was going on in the Rails community at that time. So an example of that was the MVC design pattern where you have your model, view, and controller. That was something that I guess you could say was kind of pioneered by Rails in the early 2000s. Microsoft had a technology called WebForms, which didn't really go anywhere. It kind of gave way to the MVC framework model, but I noticed that they adopted that seemingly later than Ruby on Rails did. And I just felt like being open source and with the, the blogs I was reading and other sources of information, I felt like Rails at the time had a better future than C Sharp. And C Sharp isn't really going anywhere. I think if I built the application in that platform, I would have been fine, but I'd probably be working at a different place right now, doing different projects and working with different people. And in all likelihood, that probably would be more of a corporate type of environment because large corporations tend to like the Microsoft products a bit more than they do open source. By picking up Ruby on Rails, it gave me the opportunity to work for a number of small companies that were building exciting cutting edge products at the time as well. So I guess you could say that I based my decision on which programming platform to study based on the people around me, the people that I knew I would be working with eventually, the types of companies I would be working in, what sort of local resources were available to me, and which technology as far as syntax I kind of liked better and I felt better about the future of that technology over the next five to ten years. And I think at that time it ended up being a really good decision for me. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, looking into the future, where might Rails be going? And that's something that I've tried to talk about in my other videos, like should you learn Rails in 2021? Should you learn Rails in 2022? I'm constantly trying to figure out where the industry is going to be in the next five years or so. Is Rails still going to be a thing? Is there going to be a new thing that's really popular? There are a lot of legacy applications written in Rails, and there are more applications that need maintenance that need to be built than there are Rails developers right now. So if you have some experience, at least, the opportunities in the Rails community are very good. And that's something that I tried to, uh, that's a point that I tried to make in my previous video. As far as where the technology is going, one thing that I do like about Ruby on Rails right now is that it's continuing to innovate, where they're trying new experimental things with the high wire framework, and they're trying to bring that, uh, that kind of magic that Rails originally had, where a single programmer could get a lot done and you get a lot of productivity out of them. They're trying to uh, bring that 
to the front end and integrate with Rails. Because I think if there's any one weakness Rails has had over the last several years, it's that the JavaScript on the front end has evolved dramatically with the introduction of React. And that's made some of the old-fashioned Rails techniques for having a dynamic front end, which is Ajax and CoffeeScript and jQuery, that stuff's a little bit antiquated right now, and the JavaScript world has much better design patterns for writing the front end of the website. So things have kind of evolved where the popular design right now is to have your Ruby on Rails backend. Yes, a lot of developers like to use the Ruby on Rails backend, even though you could substitute that for Java or .NET. Rails still gives you a lot of productivity and still very strong in the web server side of the application. But for a front end side, this whole JavaScript world kind of evolved and sprung up and, and it's doing its own thing now. And I think what they're doing with Stimulus JS and Turbo is they're trying to make it so that in cases where you don't need that whole silo of an application on your front end, you could just use Rails templates and just a few sprinklings of JavaScript. I think it's an interesting idea, and whether or not it causes Rails to stick around and become more popular, I'm not really sure, but I kind of like the concept. I like that it's kind of a bold risk, and it's pushing the industry forward a little bit. Yeah, going back even earlier in my days of programming, I also had a choice at one point where I wanted to, to where I wanted to develop Windows applications and back in like the 90s it was quite a cumbersome thing to do without the right tooling. I know Visual Basic was uh, really popular then, but I found a tool called Borland Delphi and it was so cool because you could just drag and drop components onto a form and build your window and your application that way. And then just you just wire up the components to a little bit of logic using the Pascal language. And that just worked so well. You could get so much done. And I actually made a, a bunch of applications that way with very little effort. Uh, and I think it was a lot easier to do it that way than if you were to use some of those Microsoft products and C++. That, I really like that aspect of it. And when I started learning Ruby on Rails and comparing it against the Microsoft stack, which was C Sharp, or even the, the Java type of stuff, that productivity that Rails offered me reminded me a lot of the Borland Delphi tool that I used way back then. So I guess uh, in a nutshell, that's why I like Ruby on Rails. I still think it's got a bright future, uh, but the difficult hurdle for junior developers right now is getting experience to show that you're a serious Rails developer. Because I think one of the problems that junior devel developers have in particular is that employers aren't really certain if they're going to stick with it because a lot of people they're interested in programming they hear it's a good career and they just kind of pick a language because they want to get into programming but they're not really passionate about the technology and the platform so that's probably the biggest reason why companies are hesitant to hire somebody with very little experience doing Ruby on Rails. And I could make another whole video about that on how to get over that experience for Ertl. But for now, uh, I just wanted to answer those questions on whether you should learn Rails or something else. So if you found this video to be useful, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and be sure to watch the next video. See you next time.